Hello there, and I am K1WIZ. This video aims to demonstrate the features of a new mobile hotspot offering known as the D-Spot. The D-Spot was envisioned to address a lot of pain points that mobile D-Star operators have when they use a mobile hotspot solution. I've heard many comments on the air about uh, the many different pains and in design of this, I tried to be sensitive to many of those pains to try to address those problems. So, as you can see here, the D-Spot is a very simple device. It has two functional buttons, a functional switch, antenna output, and four functional status indicators. You'll also note that the D-Spot has high quality connection output and is built within a ruggedized aluminum case. So we see here that we have a USB and an Ethernet uh, RJ45 connection on the side. These two options permit internet egress either through a tethered device, like a cell phone or a tablet with a data plan, or a hardwired Ethernet connection. Many hams choose to use Wi-Fi for this method, but the problem is Wi-Fi often results in higher latency as well as a dead mobile device upon reaching your final destination. The D-Spot allows you to tether using this built-in USB port and at the same time it delivers power to that device keeping it charged while operating as well as using a connection that is as low latent as possible. Uh, this way you get better performance when tethering on the road to your device that has a data plan. Uh, you'll also notice that in the back there is a DC power connection jack right here, standard 2.1 millimeter input, so you can use any 12 volt source. Internally there is a buck regulator that allows you to input a range anywhere between 7 and 35 volts DC. The internal electronics has an internal DC bus that runs at a constant level of 5 volts. So without further ado, we'll go ahead and demonstrate connection and operation of the D-Spot unit. At this time, we'll add 12 volts DC input to the back of the unit. And this could be from the cigarette lighter jack. And keep in mind, you should never operate the unit, even though the power is low, you should never operate the unit without an antenna connected first. So we'll connect a standard 2 meter 440 whip, turn on the power, and when you turn on the power, you'll notice no indication right away. The D-Spot is now undergoing the bootstrap process and the operating system is coming up and you'll see momentarily the uh, SD card read-write activity LED begin to flicker. That will, in, that will be your indication that the D-Spot is actually up and running and ready, ready to be tethered. So as you can see here, we've seen some flashing and we know that now the operating system is fully loaded. The intention of the D-Spot design was to be simple so that you didn't really have to take your eyes off the road in order to gauge the operation. Now we'll go ahead and we'll add e internet access through a tethered iPhone. Keep in mind that the D-Spot also works with Android devices as well in the same manner. So now we'll add my iPhone right there and in doing so, I'll try to do this by, by one hand, okay? So the iPhone now will recognize the D-Spot. It will ask you if you want to trust the computer. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and hit trust. Okay, once we do that, we're going to go ahead and turn on the personal hotspot. Noting that when we do this, we're going to use Bluetooth and USB only. We're not going to use Wi-Fi. Now, you'll notice that sometimes, depending on the uh, phone or whatever, sometimes tethering doesn't work on the first try. But we found that if you toggle the hotspot, that we do get positive results on the second time. You'll know you get positive results because you'll see the blue bar indicating the connection on top. Alrighty then. If you don't get connection uh, on first try, you can always try unplugging and replugging your tethered connection. 
uh, it's possible that uh, something didn't get recognized or the hotspot wasn't fully booted upon the first insertion. So we'll just insert it again and give it a second try. Okay, so we'll turn the tethering on, USB, either that or my iPhone could be a little bit on the flake there. Okay, so once you see this blue bar up above, you should be good. Now keep in mind, right, we have our radio right here. Keep in mind right now, you'll notice that these two LEDs for the process communication, one is for IRC GDB gateway, and the second one is for, um, the third one is for D-Star repeater controller. Um, the fourth LED indicates viable internet connectivity. So once the system realizes that it has viable internet connectivity, it will start the process daemons that allow D-Star communication to take place. Okay, so the system now realizes that there's viable connectivity. Zero, five, zero, Charlie. And we just got connected to Reflector 50 Charlie. So we are good. We are good to it go. It is 9.45 p.m. Yes, it's 9.45 at the time of this recording. Um, so this is what we see here is a fully operational D-Spot unit that is now available for use. Uh, just by the simple LED indication, I can tell that I'm ready to go. So if I talk through the reflector, anyone on that reflector will hear me. Um, if I need to reboot the hotspot, holding down this black button here will initiate SBIN reboot, which will cause the hotspot to reboot itself. Keeping in mind that I would have to go through toggling the tethering connection on my mobile device. So if I were to go ahead and do that, it would actually execute reboot. Now, one of the things I've heard many often by hands that run mobile D-Star hotspots is that they've often had unclean shutdowns when they've arrived at their destination and it's resulted in card corruption. To address that, I've built in a red shutdown button. So when we hit that, we hold that in for five seconds. Holding it in for five seconds fires off a command, SBIN shutdown. And what that does is when the system is shut down cleanly, you'll notice it releases the tethering connection and now all of the LED indicators have gone dark. This indicates that the hotspot is now okay to be powered down. So we disconnect power or shut off power and disconnect and we're ready to go. This system also has enough room on the inside for an internal battery if you wish to float the device on the DC bus. You can install your battery by connecting it to the input of the buck regulator. You'll notice that operation is simple as far as removing the cover and on the inside there is room for a small lithium polymer pack. Uh, it's up to the user to install the appropriate regulator for charging that battery. Um, and again the nice thing about this is that it's lightweight, it's versatile, and you can do um, you can do any option as far as power, solar, lithium polymer, uh, AC adapter, right? So we've got our trusty AC adapter plugged in right here, okay? So what you've just seen here is the D-Spot, right? Let me go ahead and plug this all back in, get this turned on and run, and we're going to go ahead and demonstrate uh, connecting to a reflector. So we can see that the OS is now bootstrapping there. And keep in mind, uh, folks, that the DSpot firmware is based on Debian Linux, and firmware updates are available to the end user for the life of the unit at no charge. Okay? And again, as I mentioned before, when you tether, it does keep your device charged. So there's no reason to have a separate charge connection to your device when you're using the D-Spot mobile hotspot, right? Here we go. First try this time. So apparently last time I didn't have, uh, didn't wait for the OS to be fully up. So now we're good to go. And in a moment, the D-Spot will recognize that we have viable 
internet connectivity and it will go ahead and start IRCDDB gateway as well as DSTAR repeater controller. Two, R, E, S, zero, five, zero, Charlie. Okay, so if I go through, I can connect up to another reflector, right? Let's say I wanted to connect to one Charlie. I can just send a DTMF command, and it will take me there. HK3DC, WW3N. And there we go. Yeah, Dan, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a long story, but I'm willing to tell you. I wanted to ask you before I answer that, do you feel like doing PSK on 20? I could try some PSK on 20, sure. Give me a couple seconds to uh, plug the uh, HF antenna back in here. I we had uh, some threads and thunderstorms, and I pulled it off here before uh, before I went to work this morning, having plugged it back in. But, yep, give me a second. I can do that. So, again, if I wanted to reboot the system, again, you just hold down the black yeah, reboot key great. for five seconds, uh, and the reboot function will be called, one, one and the system will cleanly reboot. This is useful if you think the D-Spot the might have uh, lapsed its connection, but it should persistently try to reconnect. But if you feel the unit has hung, uh, which in, in my experience it, it, hasn't, it hasn't ever really hung uh, during normal use, um, you can cause the unit to reboot, which I've just done here. Notice it released the tethered connection. There we go. Internet is now viable. R-E-S-0-5. Zero, Charlie. And we're good to go. And the operational status indicates we're ready to go. This is K1WIZ demonstrating the new D Star D Spot. Thank you for watching. And by the way, these units are now commercially available and uh, ready for order. So if you would like a D Spot unit, come see my eBay listing. Uh, my eBay user is K1WIZ. Have a great day, and thanks for watching.